In order to help us understand our enhanced categorical analysis a little bit better, uh, we probably should look at the shape of pi squared. Uh, so we know what a normal distribution is, and we've talked a lot about, you know, with a normal distribution, we've got this, and with our p-values, we go a certain number of standard deviations away, and we fill, fill this in, and that area under the curve uh, was calculated to be our p-value. So there are some similarities when we are using chi-squared, um, but chi-squared changes a lot based upon what our degrees of freedom are. So if we have a very small degrees of freedom with our chi-squared, uh, it kind of looks like this. That's what our chi-squared winds up being. This is small degrees of freedom, like, you know, like two or something. Uh, it's kind of this distribution. Um, but when we get bigger and bigger, what starts to happen is we kind of start to deviate uh, away from this and we get kind of more and more like that as our, uh, as our degrees of freedom increases. Now, how we calculate out our p-values is still the same. Whatever we calculate for our chi-squared, we go out so far and we find the area under the curve. Same thing with these guys, we go out so far and we find the area under the curve. Now on our chi-squared, there's like, uh, we are just doing from the area from the critical point and the area to the right. Um, and that, that's just how those p-values are in fact calculated. So let's kind of label this real quick. This was for our chi-squared and this is for small degrees of freedom is the blue, and then these guys are larger degrees of freedom. And we can label this guy as normal. So as we're doing our enhanced categorical analysis, uh, we will be using the chi-squared as our test statistic uh, to help us determine what our p-values are. And in, when, and in reporting, in our APA format, we, we will be using the chi-squared uh, in order to report our test statistic.